Hi, thanks for joining. In this video, we'll learn how to explore data using the Graph Explorer in Timber. This video is the second of three videos covering the Graph Explorer. If you haven't already, I invite you to watch the Graph Explorer Overview, which is the first video in this series. So we'll enter the Graph Explorer by clicking on the Visualize tab and choosing Graph Explorer. We'll start by choosing the data model we want to explore, in this case, a telecommunications model. After selecting the data model, we have two options. The first is called Visual Query, where we begin our exploration by simply choosing the concept we wish to load on the graph together with its properties or filters we want to apply to the concept. The second option is called Natural Language Query, where we can load the graph to answer a specific query in natural language. The language and synonyms we can use here are based on the terminology and semantics of our data model. When using this option, Timber automatically suggests free text options based on relationships to other concepts, properties, or even data values themselves for specific filtering. However, for this example, we'll begin our exploration using the default visual query method. We'll start by choosing the concept we wish to load to the graph. Once chosen, we can see all the properties of the concept that are being added to the exploration. Here, we can selectively load only the relevant data needed for our exploration, which is especially useful when working with large tables. Next, we can apply filters in cases where we want to filter specific properties. In the filter box that appears, after selecting the properties we want to filter, we can either type the value we wish to filter, or if we don't remember the exact value, we can ask Timber to load distinct data values from the chosen property by clicking on the Import Data button. For those who prefer to use SQL, you can also click on the toggle to the left and define the filters using standard SQL. Once we finish defining the filters, we'll click on Save and set a limit for the results displayed on the graph. The limit ranges between 1 to 500, but we can change that in the system settings if required. In this case, we'll continue with the suggested 50 nodes. We're now ready to start the exploration by clicking on Next. Great, we now see our 50 data points. Let's click on full screen to get a better view. So we can see that each data node has a textual label beneath it. The default label that appears for each node is according to the entity label we selected for each concept in our data model. When clicking on a node, a side panel appears on the right with all the details of the selected node, including the concept the node belongs to, the node type, the node entity label, and the node entity ID. Beneath the details, we can see the properties and data of the selected node according to the properties we chose to load earlier. We can click and add as many properties and relationships as we'd like. For example, we can add the city property and load it to the graph. When loading a property, by default, Timber automatically infers and connects other nodes that share the same value under the property we loaded. This setting can be changed in the graph settings menu. The same goes for relationships, where we can easily traverse the graph and connect the data from other concepts to our selected node according to the relationships in the data model. If we'd like to add properties or relationships to all the nodes on the graph, and not just to individual nodes, we can turn to the Node Group menu. Here, there are additional options we can perform on all the nodes of a given concept. Firstly, when hovering over a concept group, we can see that the concept group settings can be edited. For example, instead of all our nodes from this concept having the default entity label, we can edit that label and change it at any time. We also have the option to change the node's background color, border color, and even the label color. If we like, we can also change the concept group shapes to better distinguish the concept nodes from other nodes on the graph. Lastly, we can scale the node sizes based on things like the number of incoming or outgoing relationships, specific property values, a set constant scale, and we can even scale using graph algorithms such as page rank or between a centrality when relevant. Continuing with the node group menu, we have the option to cluster different concept groups. To remove the cluster, we simply click on the cluster and the nodes will spread out. Next, we have the option to fetch all the properties of a concept in case we didn't add them previously. Last, but definitely not least, we have the airplane logo, which enables us to travel the graph and load properties and relationships to all the nodes of the concept instead of just adding them individually one by one. For example, if at first we added the city property to our individual node, now by clicking on the Find Data Connections, we can go to the Properties tab and add the city property to all the nodes on the graph. 
Of course, the same applies to relationships that can be added to all the nodes, not just to individual ones. Here, in the Relationships tab, we can also add settings like selecting specific concepts within a hierarchy, selecting the properties we want to include for the new nodes, as well as adding filters if required. It's worth noting that by right-clicking on any node, we can perform additional actions such as adding connections to the node or changing its layout, similar to the options we saw in the node group menu. Here, we can also create a new label for our node and change its color if we'd like to highlight it. By right-clicking on the node, we can also load all the properties of the selected node, as well as view its relationship tree. We can also choose to select and highlight the path of all the nodes that are connected to this node, as well as isolate this node together with its connected nodes. Finally, we can click on Remove Node to remove it from the graph, either alone or together with its connected nodes. And that's all for this video. In our next video, we will take a deeper dive into the different functionalities of the Graph Explorer and its main menu settings. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. We'll see you in our next videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.